Today we're gonna to be learning about the symmetry of functions and all the different things that attach to that big concept, which is actually gonna be something really useful for us as we go further into integral calculus. Now you see I've got an outline here to sort of chart our way through this. We're gonna look at the big idea, introduce, like why do we care about this? I'm gonna give you a couple of different ways to define the symmetries of functions. Well, I'm going to introduce some language and some new names here and I want to explain what the names are about and where they come from. Uh, importantly, we'll look at what happens when you have different kinds of symmetries and you join them together. And then lastly, we'll kind of go full circle and return to this idea of calculus and see one of the applications in function symmetry. So that's the roadmap. Let's get started. When it comes to function symmetry, what is the big idea? It's very simple. Um, functions, just like shapes and other kinds of objects we're used to dealing with, they can be symmetrical and their symmetry, if you, if you can recognize symmetry uh, and manipulate it, that can be a really useful thing for us to recognize. So here's a couple of examples here, right? Um, you've got this function over here, which I think most people when they look at, even though they don't know necessarily what the function is, they would say, oh, that's symmetrical. Uh, you know, if you kind of flip it over, if you reflect it, that's a kind of shape which is going to be the same on both sides. So we would say that this shape here has reflectional symmetry. Um, and importantly, it's reflectional across the y-axis. So if we had a look at a shape um, like this, and if I said, okay, well, let's look at it the other way and flip this over like so. There we go. It's the same, same shape. Uh, if I flip it back, you're like, wait, which one was the original one? There we go. It's the same shape whichever way you flip it across that vertical line. So this is what we mean by reflectional symmetry in a function. This guy over here is uh, also symmetrical, but in a different way. It's not reflectional symmetry. Um, this time, this kind of shape needs to be spun around. If you rotate it, you would have the same kind of shape. So we don't call this reflectional symmetry, we call this rotational symmetry. Um, and I can prove this to you really quickly by, just like before, I can take this same graph and instead of reflecting it, I can rotate it. So let's again go to edit this. And if I spin it around once, twice, there we go, 180 degrees around the origin, that's important. Uh, then you can see it's the same shape that we had before. In fact, now there goes the original one, you're like, which one was which? Uh, they look identical to me, okay? So we can see that whichever way we look at this when we spin it around, if we go the full 180 degrees around the origin, this has rotational symmetry. And which is why, calling back to like your seven days, we call reflectional symmetry line symmetry because you can reflect it across a line, in this case, left and right. Um, and then this symmetry we have on the right hand side is rotational because we call it point symmetry around a point, in this case, the origin. So what's the idea here? Whichever version you're looking at, and it's actually hard to tell which one is which until you squint and look at the numbers on the axes there. You can see, for instance, um, this one's backwards. Uh, these guys are backwards and upside down. So if we do a uh, reflection across the y-axis, you have this new graph. And if we do a rotation about the origin, zero, zero, it's a fast way to write it, um, you're getting the same graph. So I hope you're convinced that those are the same and this is the idea that we're focusing on, function symmetry. Now, how can we use this uh, knowledge to come up with some helpful definitions for us? Well, you've got this first symmetry, the one for this, uh, this red function, and this second type of symmetry, and we can describe it geometrically in the way that we just talked about. So the geometric de definition for symmetry type one is it's reflectional or reflected, uh, reflectional across the y-axis, right? And then the second type of symmetry is rotational around the origin, but zero, zero. But how do we actually turn that into something we can manipulate? Like that means I can describe which one is which, but I need some algebra here and some of my function notation to be able to say, well, what does that mean in terms of, you know, symbols and characters, right? So let's just come back to uh, these original functions. When I say this guy has reflectional symmetry, what I mean there is if you'd pick like some x value, okay, let's pick an x value like say that guy there, let's choose a different color, it's a little more standing out for you. Uh, let's pick that guy there. That's an x value of three. When you go up 
to the function, you get a y value. I'm um, looking at my scale there, that looks like it's about eight, right? So I would say f of three is equal to eight. But to say that that's reflectional symmetry means that on the other side, on the opposite side, if I weren't putting in three, positive three, if I were putting in the opposite value, which is negative three, um, I go up to exactly the same point. There I am lining up to the eight, just like I did before. So in this case, f of negative three equals eight. And I should be able to do this if I have true reflection, reflectional symmetry all the way across my function. I should be able to do this anywhere. Like I, I don't know what this particular value over here is. Let's call it, um, let's just call it x. As I go up to here, I get some value over here. I don't even know what that is. It doesn't line up to a nice spot. But if I look across to the other side and take the opposite of that, you can see this must be negative x and I'm getting that same value all the way across. So f of x and f of negative x are giving me the same number. So this is the way that I can algebraically define this uh, new kind of symmetry here, right? So I can say f of x for any value of x, two, three, four, five, whatever, and f of minus x, or negative x, they give me the same thing. Now, what about rotation? This is not quite so obvious. Well, let's have a look here at this blue function. If I take uh, an x value, again, let's pick one like, say, this guy here, this is one, it goes up to a nice convenient spot up there. I get a y value, so f of one, I get a y value of, in this case, 0 0.5, a half. You can see it right across there. So I'm just gonna write that as f of one equals a half. Now, if I take the opposite value, cause I've got some kind of like, you know, look on the other side of the axis on the origin kind of thing, right? So that's negative one over here. What f value do I get when I test f of negative one? Well, you can see it goes downward this way. So I've lined up to negative 0 0.5. So f of negative one, equals negative a half. Now look at this closely, right? What happened was I flipped around from this, that's too big, from this x value here, I flipped it over to the opposite x value from one to negative one. And when I had a look at the corresponding y values, they also flipped from a half to negative a half. Now this actually is um, back to some geometry uh, from year seven again. A rotation is equivalent to two reflections across the appropriate lines. So if I reflect across, in this case, the y-axis going horizontally, and then reflect again across the x-axis, which goes vertically, um, you get the same value. So if I go down to here and say, what's my algebraic definition? I can say that f of x, what's that equal to? Well, it's a reflection of a reflection that gives you a rotation, or you might see it sometimes written as uh, negative f of x equals f of negative x. So there's a, one, a negative on both sides, so it's nice and symmetrical. See what we did there? So this is a way that we can describe. We can say, you know, even without looking at a picture, if I can test out and say, well, if you put in negative x to this function, do you get out the same thing as if you put in x? Or if I put in negative x, do I get the opposite of if I put in x? This is an algebraic way to define these different symmetries. And this is gonna to start to lead us to this next part here, right? These are not just called symmetry type one and symmetry type two, they actually have special names. This first type of symmetry, reflectional symmetry, when it comes to functions, we call it even symmetry, or we call the functions even functions when they have this kind of symmetry. And what's the opposite of even? Well, when you have rotational symmetry around the origin, we call that an odd function, we said that it has odd symmetry, okay?